Now, obviously, power makes sense that you need for a satellite, but we can't really just plug it into the wall socket, right? No. So we need to get power from somewhere, and overwhelmingly, yeah. that's solar power. Yeah. In fact, I hadn't really realized till researching this thing, this is actually kind of why we have solar cells on yes. our roof today. Because when the very first solar cells were built, they were hideously expensive. Mm. But they were able to sell them because they needed them for satellites. Yeah. And that meant that people were building more and more of these things, getting better and better at it, which yep. meant the price came down. And before long, the price was low enough that uh, people could aff afford to stop putting them on places like lighthouses. Yeah. And then eventually the price kept on dropping enough until it started being feasible to put them on people's roofs. And now it's the cheapest form of exactly. electricity. So yes, you can see the huge solar panels on the International Space Station. I mean, it makes up such a large fraction of the total size and mass of the, uh, of the facility. Now, this won't work 100% of the time for something in an Earth orbit because you will plunge into the Earth's shadow. That's you're right. going around every 90 minutes. Yes. So probably 30 of that 90 minutes you're going to be in the Earth's shadow. So what do you do then? Well, you need the solar panels for most of the time, but then yep. you're going to need batteries. So you store more power uh, than you yeah. need in your batteries. But they don't have to last very long. It's not like on Earth when you might need batteries to last you all night. I guess you only need to last, yeah, that 30 minutes when you're in complete darkness till you come out and recharge them. Even in geostationary orbit, most of the time you don't go through shadow at all, but there'll be certain times of the year when you go through the shadow, but it's also going to be a very short yeah. fraction of the time. So again, you'll need enough batteries to cope with that. Now, that's great for missions that are in space for a long time. Yep. If you're just going up for a short time, something like a, a capsule or the space shuttle, they can use different sources. Yep. I, mean, I suppose they could have a, a petrol engine burning, but that's not great. What they actually do is something similar, which is called a fuel cell, yes. which combines hydrogen and oxygen to make electricity. Yep. And so these are it's basically like fossil fuels. And it has less toxic. If you had a petrol engine, though, what you can do with the fumes. Yeah, that. exactly. So these will keep things going for you know, a week or two's mission. But if you want to be longer than that, you're going to need solar cells. That's right. And so, and again, since satellites are generally tending towards more longer missions, we're seeing more of them solar panels. But as you said, we don't. That's why you don't notice solar panels on, say, all the spacecraft that humans go on because they're only up there at a shorter period. And you also need batteries to give you power while you're being launched until you can deploy your solar yes. cells. But often one of the first things you'll do when you get out of your rocket capture is put the solar cells out quickly before your batteries go In fact, fast. I, I, every mission, that's one of the earliest things you always hear in that critical part, because if they don't deploy and you don't get power, then the rest End of the mission, mission doesn't yes. matter. Now, it is a problem to have um, solar power if you're going to the outer solar system, or if you're going to be something like a Mars rover, because yep. there's nighttime on Mars. There's uh, also dust on Mars. Dust that on be, Mars. Yep. A lot of the Mars rovers use solar cells, but they tend to get dust in that yes. ends the mission. But this is the Cassini spacecraft. Now that Saturn... I assume the power is a lot lower from the sun? You're 10 times further from the sun, so you're going to have 100 times less power per square metre. Yeah. They do still sometimes use solar power. I think the, the JUICE mission yes. recently launched through Jupiter has enormous solar yeah, panels. And, and, and Juno when it did as well, and I think the... It was the size of a tennis court or something like that for the solar panels just to generate enough to keep it going. But in fact, a lot of the missions are using something else, which is a radio thermal generator. So you basically get problems something like plutonium and use yep. the heat from that to drive some sort of heat engine. And that can give it power. Um, so down here are the radioisotope thermal electric generators and the Cassini spacecraft that visited Saturn. And here are them loading them in. And I guess it also has the benefit because right, if you're adding huge solar panels, as we've talked about before, you're adding weight, which means that is more fuel to take off the Earth, right? Yes. So these are used. There are problems. First yep. of all, there's only a very limited amount of pluto weapons grade plutonium that's used in this. So it's a real uh, nuclear weapon proliferation risk. Yes. And what happens if it blows up on the launch pad or something like this? They try and encapsulate it very strongly, yeah. but it's uh, it's difficult. Yep. Uh, but in some sense, it's a really good power source because it can last a long time, not depend on huge solar cells.